Hey guys, it's Undead Chronic, back again with another video. This time, feminists, and you have to understand, when I say feminists, I mean virtually every single normie in society. Ben Shapiro is a feminist, Glenn Beck is a feminist, Tim Pool is a feminist, Ted Cruz is a feminist, Donald Trump is a feminist, Sargon Avocado is a feminist, Shu on Head's a feminist, um, they're all feminists. Those who believe women should wield the same political power as men without the sacrifices men have made are feminists. But when I say feminist in this sense, I'm kind of talking about the bougie, um, upper class, journalist class, leftist, white woman establishment. They're getting real upset. They're getting worried. They're getting really concerned. Women at all stages of life are screaming, where are all the good men? 19 year olds that can't get Chad's commitment are asking where are all the good men where they take their fr friends in the friend zone and project their beta qualities their provider qualities or loyalty onto dudes who have never single loyalty at all the Chad's and Tyrone's women in their 20s with a bastard or two where are all the good men where are the six foot plus dudes that spend all day in the gym that want to take care of me and my bastard spawn. Women in their 30s, chasing a career, never had a kid, never had a relationship. Where are all the good men? I was told I'm a Disney princess. I need to be swept off my feet by CEO Chad. Women in their 40s, in their 50s, after a divorce, policing their husband of 20 plus years. Where are all the good men? All my lady friends at Wine Wednesdays told me I was a catch. They told me I was beautiful. They told me that riding the CC was empowering. Yet after I dumped my husband, left him on the streets, took his house, took his kids, and let dude smash me in our marital bed, there's no guys around that'll treat me as good as my husband did. Where are all the good men? And now they're getting real upset because they're not even getting the chance to fleece us, Brutus. Women, feminists, are getting upset because men are being single. That's right. They are triggered because men are single. The title of this article I'm responding to, Men are more likely to be single than women. It's not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. If you're a leech, if you depend on the access for your puniti to result in a capital financial gain, yeah. If your entire job description is opening up your legs and men aren't interested in that anymore, your market shrinking, that's kind of bad. But why is it bad for the economy? Why is this a bad sign? I haven't read this article yet, but I've shared it around, but we're gonna respond to this one real quick. But before we do, if you appreciate the content that Ande Chronic makes, you like the shorts, you like these long form videos, consider donating to paypal.me slash the Undead Chronic. And remember boys, no hymen, no diamond. Let's get into it. This is uh, written by a Belinda Loosecombe, Loosecombe, Loosecombebe, Loosecombe, I don't know how to say that name. Sorry, I thought I butchered it five times, but um, Linda. Let's see what Linda has to say. And I checked out her picture. She's like a, a, a white feminist journalist in her 40s. She's married with kids. But let's see what she has to say about the single men and why it's a problem. She says, almost a third of adult single men live with a parent. Single men are much more likely to be unemployed, financially fragile, and lack a college degree than those of the partner. Okay. are they? Is the argument here that if you suddenly start dating a chick, you're going to become financially independent? You'll, you'll be able to get a house or is it that women choose they pick the successful men chicken and the egg right she says they're also likely to have lower median earnings single men earned less in 2019 than in 1990 even adjusting for inflation yeah because our job market in the u.s has been shipped overseas we ship the factories overseas we ship manufacturing overseas we basically have shipped everything overseas while at the same time pushing and promoting women to take their jobs in the marketplace. You can't brag about college degrees for women when you realize that there's a, a million programs to get women into college, scholarships for women, all these things to promote women going anywhere, doing what they want. What are these scholarships and these programs funded by the taxpayer? Who's a taxpayer? Well, mostly men pay taxes. So men are paying, older men are paying for the subjugation of younger men trying to get educated and join the job market. And then add to that a nice little spice of immigration. I love it. I absolutely love it when some leftist cuck bitch, some ingrate, some fool on Reddit is like, oh, 
This is late stage capitalism. I'll never afford a house. Oh, yay. Open borders. Bring them all in. Bring them all in. Please come in. Make us diverse. Oh, I can't get a house. There's no jobs for me. You are so stupid. I actually, actually support your replacement. Maybe we can find some, maybe we can import some immigrants. Let's get some red pill immigration. Let's get some dudes in here that respect themselves. Some guys that respect their own testicles. Unlike the average white soy boy bitch boy out in California. Complaining about housing prices. Complaining about low wages. But then voting to ship in millions and millions of illegals. They're, I would say they're stupid, but really they're acting like women. They're voting off their emotion. They base everything off their emotion. It's disgusting. Continuing. Single women, meanwhile, earn the same they did 30 years ago, but those with partners have increased their earnings by 50%. There are some of the findings in new Pew Research analysis of 2019 data on the growing gap between American adults who live with a partner and those who do not. While the study is less about the effect of marriage and more about the effect that the changing economic circumstances have had on marriage, yeah, women go to college, they're taking spots in college from men, and then when they graduate from college, they go, I don't want to date a guy that didn't go to college. Bam, you have the quote unquote mating crisis, unquote, that I, uh, you know, talked about in another video. It sheds light on some of the unexpected outcomes of shifts in the labor market. Over the same period of time that the fortunes of single people have fallen, the study shows the proportion of American adults who live with a significant other, be it a spouse or unmarried partner, has also declined substantially. Oh, it's almost like you give women access to every single Chad and Tyrone in a 100 mile radius through Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge, all these dating apps. They don't want to settle down unless it's with the top 1% of dudes. So at the very best, the top 1% of dudes settle down. And the rest of the women kind of wait in line. They're willing to be shared. You know, this is why back in the day, it wasn't the woman who had 100% control over who she was with sexually in a marriage. Because if that was the case, they'd all go for the biggest dude that unga de bunga the biggest mammoth down. But what about all his friends that helped him get it down? No, 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 no. All women think they're queens. They all think their eggs are gold. And so they all demand the top, 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 top percent of dudes. In 1990, about 71% of folks from the age of 25 to 54, which is considered the prime working years, had a partner they were married to or lived with. In 2019, only 62% did. So it's down 10%. I'll be honest though, 25 to 54, um, <laughs> that's, like, that's like milk a month past its expiration date when it comes to females. If you're, tw if you're a woman and you're 25, you're too old for me. Yeah, you're too old for me. Because I'm, I'm kind of intelligent. I kind of know what I want. I can delineate the purpose of my actions. And the only reason I want a woman in my life is to have children with. A lot of children with. To have a good family with. And 25? That's seven years of your eggs bouncing around like damn pinball machines. Boing, 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 going everywhere. Decaying. It's called ovarian aging. I love it when people are like, oh, Chronic says he's a scientist, but he doesn't know 0.0001% of women are born without a hymen. Ha <laughs> ha, I own you, Chronic. You're not a scientist. Shut the fuck up, man. Shut the fuck up. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about the opinions. I can't even call them sheep. You're still human, but your genes are worth less than mine. You're dysgenic. Why would, I, why would I care about the opinions of dudes that are willing to wife up 33-year-old females who have been run through like a damn track meet? Go, go ahead. Go ahead. You should be happy that Mr. 300-pound bench press isn't interested in your type of female. This should make you happy that I am not competing with you. Well, let's get back to the article. Partly, this is because people are taking longer to establish that relationship. The median age of marriage is creeping up, and while more people live together than before, there has not matched the numbers of people who are staying single. But it's not just an age shift. The number of older single people is also much higher than it was in 1990, from a quarter of 40 to 54-year-olds to almost a third by 2019. A third. Think about that. 33% of women, 40 to 54. This is why I think about this. Get that overtime job. Work it hard. Because guess what? If you're a woman and you're 40, you're a man. And you wanna, you're not going to have a family to retire with. You're not going to have a house, a patriarch to rely on. You are going to be have your ass dumped in a retirement home. Surrounded by people that don't care about you. That aren't your family. But you didn't make a family. So, like, why would you care? 
I don't, I don't understand why people who refuse to make a family expect for a family to come with them in their own age. You were supposed to make them. You were supposed to sacrifice for them. But you thought your puniti was worth gold. You chased their corporate lifestyle. You bought the box wine. You got some cats. Now enjoy your decline. I know I will. I know I will. A trend that has not had equal impact across all sections of society. The Pew study, which uses information from 2019's American Community Survey, notes that men are now more likely to be single than women, which was not the case 30 years ago. Um, men of color, black people, are much more likely to be single, 59% than any other race, and black women are the most likely to be single of any sector. Let me read that again. This is important. Black women are the most likely to be single of any sector. Is it because the government came in and decided to wage war against the black man, the black father, the black patriarch? They demanded that if you wanted welfare checks, there couldn't be a black man living in the household. And so anytime there was an economic downturn, you basically had families choosing between having hungry kids and living the single mother lifestyle. Now, that's not the case anymore. They, oh, look at black women. Oh, no, no, they're not starving for anything. Uh-uh. Actually, rather the opposite. Um, they're like walruses walking around. But the culture of single motherhood, the culture of bastards, the culture of attacking fatherhood has remained in the black community. And that is in large part, I would say the largest factor for the crime disparity between the races is fatherless children. If you're raised without a father, you are a bastard and you're most likely gonna be a fool. Asian people are the less likely to be single, 29%. Yeah, because everybody wants an Asian waifu. Pretty much how it is. Followed by whites and Hispanics at 33%. And wait, wait, what is, what is that? Whites are 33% likely to be single, and black women are 62%. Goodness sakes, 62% black women. Oh my goodness. I'll let Kevin Samuels deal with that. Maybe he can marry three or four of the buffalo himself and be a high value black man and to promote the black family. Yeah, whatever. If you're marrying a non virgin, bro, you're a cuck. I don't care what you say. Most researchers agree that the trends showing that fewer people are getting married and that those who do are increasingly better off financially have a lot more to do with the effective wealth and education on marriage than vice versa. People who are financially stable are just more likely to find an attractive partner. Yeah, women are gold diggers. Women want resources to raise their children. There's nothing wrong with a woman being attracted to wealth. This is why she attracted to wealth. Does a woman want to marry a wealthy man so her kids are taken care of? Or does she want to marry the wealthy man so she can spend, blow his cash on Gucci every day? There's a big difference between those two types of females. It's not that marriage is making people richer than it used to. It's that marriage is becoming an increasingly elite institution so that people are increasingly only getting married if they already have economic advantages, says Philip Cohen, a professor of sociology. Well, Cohen, um, maybe if young women weren't uh, incentivized to ride the cock carousel to get on dating apps, these young poor women could find wealthier, more stable men to marry and give them kids. Because I'll tell you what, I don't care how much money a woman makes. I don't care. I'm going to be in the position that it is not going to happen, where she's going to go out and work a job and cheat on me and get slammed by Chad and Tyrone. That's not going to happen. She'll be at home. She'll be barefoot. Maybe I'll just burn all her shoes after the wedding. Who knows? And she'll be pregnant every year. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we can break the limit. But do I care if she is a dentist? Do I care if she is a hardworking professional? Do I care that she picks? No, no, no. I'm not concerned about that. See, that's what makes men attractive. You make a lot of money as a man, you're attractive. Make a lot of money as a woman, you're probably old, you're probably unattractive. Marriage does not make people change their social class. It doesn't make people change their race. And these things are very big pro predictors of economic outcomes. Yeah, well, it's funny how you don't talk about fatherless households as a predictor of economic outcomes, Mr. Cohen. Maybe because you promote that. This reframing of the issue may explain why fewer men find women partners, or than women find partners, even though men are more likely to be looking for one. The economic pressures on men are stronger. Research has shown that the ability to provide financially is still a more prized asset in men than in women. Oh, 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 really? Oh, it's like research finds that dudes are attracted to tits. <gasps> I wonder who spent millions of dollars funding that research paper. What a waste. 
Some studies go as far to suggest that the 30-year decrease in the rate of coupling can largely be attributed to global trade and the 30-year decrease in the number of stable, well-paying jobs for American men that it brought with it. Yep, yeah, I just said that earlier. You ship all your jobs, you ship your economy overseas. American men don't get financially solvent. They don't get financially independent. They have a hard time attracting a mate. And on top of that, the feminist... The feminist machine, which crushes men every day and shifts their resources and jobs from men who deserve them, men who earned them, to women who have never earned it. That's also a problem because those women that never earned it, they get those jobs and then they look up. Oh, where are all this? There, there has to be someone above me to marry. Someone that makes more money, someone that's stronger, someone that's taller. They're not there because you don't belong that far up. You're going to be brought down a couple pegs. But again, like once she hits 30, she's basically, for all, all intents and purposes, infertile to me. Well, I guess that's 24, but still, most do. Once you hit 30, slowly and slowly and slowly, women, you live life like a man, and less men are interested in you, especially the high value men. When manufacturing moved overseas, non college educated men found it more difficult to make a living, and thus more difficult to attract a partner and raise a family. But there's also evidence that coupling up improves the economic fortunes of both couples, both men and women. It's not that they only have to pay one rent or buy one fridge. Some sociologists who study marriage say that it's having a partner suggests having a future. There's a way in which marriage makes men more responsible and makes them better workers, says University of Virginia sociology professor Bradford Wilcox. Yeah, marry so you can be a better worker, a better bee, so we can extract more taxes from you to fund wars overseas to defend Israel. Perfect. That's what every man wants to do, right? The study suggests that single men are more likely to leave a, mar a job before finding another one than married men. Yeah, because if you're married and you leave your job and you don't have one lined up, your wife's going to nag you. You're not getting puniti. She's going to dump you, divorce you, destroy you. It's basically this, this, this effect that they're promoting is nagging. But like, it's a good thing that wives nag their husbands and make them work overtime and then divorce them because they never spent any time on them in their 50s. Classic. There's also evidence that the decline in marriage is not all just about being wealthy enough to afford it. Since 1990, women have graduated college in far higher numbers than men. Yeah, because there is institutional sexism against men. The feminist establishment pushes men out of college and brings women in and gives them useless majors and saddles them with debt. So even though they got a little degree, oh, I got a bachelor's in communications. Yay. You're 23. You got $100,000 of debt. That's disgusting. That's gross. Ain't no bigger boner killer than a bitch talking about her debt. That's a fact. The BA versus non-BA gap has grown tremendously among a lot of things in terms of income, in terms of marital status, in terms of cultural markets and tastes, says Cohen. It's become a sharper demarcation over time. And I think that's part of what we see in regard to marriage. If you want to lock yourself in a room with someone for 50 years, you might want to have the same level of education and just and just have more in common with them. No, 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 no. If you want to walk, lock yourself in a room with someone for 50 years, you might want to make sure they're not a turbo slut. You might want to make sure they're not going to cheat on you. You might want to make sure they're not going to call the cops on you and break your ankles and then put you give a warning shot to the back of the head because blue lives matter or some bullshit like that. Useless. Almost done here, boys. Wilcox says, you get women who are relatively liberal having gone to college and men who are relatively conservative still living in a working class world. And that can create a kind of political and cultural divide that makes it harder for people to connect romantically as well. Yeah, liberal college educated women are turbo sluts. They have partner counts in the hundreds. They have hundreds of thousands of dollars of debts. And on top of that, they think because they got a little piece of paper, they're smart. You're not smart, bitch. You're indoctrinated. That's what you are. You're not attractive and you're getting older every year. Let's finish this before chronic pops and aneurysm. What seems clear is that the path of marriage increasingly runs through college. All men never go to college and you'll be safe. That's what I just heard. While the figures on single men's declining economic fortunes are the most sobering, they are not what surprised the report's authors the most. Quote, it's quite startling about how much the partner women have now outpaced single women unquote, says Richard Fry, a senior researcher at the Pew Research Center. About 45% of partner women have completed at least a bachelor's degree compared to a third of single women. He speculates that women may be going to college in greater numbers because it helps them attract a partner in the same way it helps men. Um, again, no. What attracts a partner is being fit. What attracts a partner is doing your squats. 
hitting the hip abductors, adductors, making sure your glute medius is nice and firm. Not being a fat ass, old ass, slut ass, bitch ass hoe, sitting at home, waiting for a man to provide. He ends the article saying, not only are they rewarded in the labor market with higher earnings, but increasingly, partnership also depends on emotional attachment, or educational attachment. Yep, well, these, guys, these people don't know men. They don't know men. But you know what? That's all right. I don't expect a bunch of feminist fools to know anything, besides indoctrination. If you guys like this kind of content, consider supporting the channel at paypal.me slash the undead chronic. It's been undead chronic, guys. Take it easy. Undead chronic here. On a wall with my boys. Cold slippers. Glass of liquor. I done stumbled on a green skinned killer. His name is Ribby. Getting jiggy. Hit that PayPal and make us get busy. I'm feeling tipsy. Too much whiskey? I'm cold copping cucks all the way to Dixie. On my chronic game. Ola Puniti. Time to roll another joint. Maybe two more. Fuck around and fuck up the world tour. <laughs> Sponsor these beats at paypal.me slash the undead chronic. Now back to this blazing chick who wants to sit on it.